Bridging, also known as faggoting, is a beautiful and old heirloom sewing technique. Mostly seen in garment sewing, it allows a gap to exist between seams for a unique and decorative look. We'll be showing you how to do it by hand and by sewing machine. Let's tackle how to bridge by hand first. Much of the work is done in prep. I'll be doing mine in the seam between the yoke and the front bodice. I cut out my fabric pieces as normal. On the edges where you plan on doing your stitches, fold under your seam allowance plus half of your desired gap. For example, if I want a quarter inch gap, I would add 1 8 to my 5 8 seam allowance, meaning I fold under 3 quarters of an inch. Press with an iron to hold your fold. Since I want my stitches to be between these two pieces, I fold it on the bottom of my yoke and the top of my front bodice where these two pieces would normally be attached. To help, I'm going to use some water-soluble embroidery stabilizer that has a sticky side. Cut a piece that's as long as your seam and about 3 inches in width. Use more than one piece if needed. Remove the paper back and place the stabilizer sticky side up. Take your first folded edge right side up and stick it to one side of the stabilizer. Take the second folded edge, also right side up, and stick it to the stabilizer, leaving a gap with your desired gap amount, so I'm doing a quarter of an inch. You can use a regular thread for hand stitching, but I think it looks best with a thicker thread. I'm using pearl cotton embroidery floss. Put it on your hand sewing needle and tie a knot at one end. Start at the end from one side, bringing up your needle from the wrong side through the folded edge in order to hide the knot. Instead of going directly to the opposite side or directly across, I'm going to grab a little bit of my fabric, but I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch down. So this is directly across, go about a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to grab a little bit of the folded edge of the fabric. I'm going to pull this all the way through. Now I'm going to do the same thing going across about a quarter of an inch to the opposite side. But before I do that, I'm going to bring my needle underneath this diagonal thread that's going across the gap and pull it tight so you end up with a little loop here. So now I can grab a little bit of this folded edge, pull it through. I'm going to go to the opposite side. Again, don't forget to go underneath the thread that's going across the gap before I do that. And then grab a little bit of the folded edge and just keep going back and forth over the gap until you go for the full length of the seam. To tie off your stitch, you're going to put it just through the folded edge. I'm going to lift up this so I can actually see my needle on the wrong side. Pull it all the way through and then just create a loop with your thread, put the end through the loop and create a knot, pushing the knot as close as you can to the fabric and then cut it off. When finished, just peel the stabilizer off and here's what it looks like. You can also do a similar look on your sewing machine. First choose your stitch and sew a sample. I'm choosing this decorative stitch, but if you don't have something similar, you can use a zigzag stitch. Measure the width of your stitch sample so you know how big your gap can be. You're going to prep your pieces the exact same way as before. Fold under the seam allowance plus half of the gap width. Stick each side to your stabilizer, leaving the exact gap width. Now stitch at your sewing machine. You may want to use a silk thread so it's a little thicker and more noticeable than all-purpose thread. In this case, the machine stitches right through the stabilizer, so we can't just peel it off. Rinse your fabric in water and the water-soluble stabilizer will wash away. My machine bridging is complete. The benefit of doing it by machine is that it's a lot faster and you know your stitches will be equal and consistent. With the hand stitch, you can use a thicker thread and there's more flexibility on how big your gap can be. Regardless of which way you do it, this heirloom technique will look lovely and you'll want to give it a try. Let us know if you have any projects in mind that you would love to try this technique on. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to get notified of our weekly releases. Also check out ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 350 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can check out our Patreon campaign and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.